Look at this limit. n factorial divided by n to the power of n. At first glance, what's your gut answer? Zero, right? The denominator seems to explode faster. It feels obvious. But obvious is a dangerous word in mathematics. And in the 18th century, Lenhard Euler saw this not as an end, but as a doorway. This simple limit leads to a genuinely tricky problem. What is the nth root of that shrinking number? That's zero to the power of zero territory. Indeterminate, deep water. Today, we're not just stating a result, we're walking the full path Euler might have taken. We'll prove our intuition correct, then dismantle it to find a more beautiful truth underneath. Let's define our sequence. a sub n equals n factorial divided by n to the power of n. Plugging in small values, it clearly drops towards zero. But for a proof, we need more than a trend. We need inevitability. The weapon of choice, the ratio test. We investigate the ratio of consecutive terms, a sub n plus one divided by a sub n. This ratio works out to n plus one factorial divided by n plus one to the power of n plus one, all multiplied by n to the power of n divided by n factorial. Now, n plus one factorial divided by n factorial simplifies to just n plus one. For the powers, n to the power of n divided by n plus one to the power of n plus one equals n to the power of n divided by n plus one to the power of n times n plus one. Combine the n plus one terms, they cancel. We're left with n to the power of n divided by n plus one to the power of n. Rewriting, this is n divided by n plus one, all raised to the power of n, or equivalently, one divided by one plus one over n, raised to the power of n. This denominator should look familiar. This is one of the fundamental definitions of Euler's number, e. Therefore, as n approaches infinity, the ratio a sub n plus 1 over a sub n approaches 1 over e. What's 1 over e? Approximately 0 0.3679, a positive constant strictly less than 1. By the ratio test for sequences, if the limit of the ratio of successive terms is a constant less than one, the sequence itself must converge to zero, not just because it looks like it should, but because the algebra forces it to. The limit as n approaches infinity of n factorial divided by n to the power of n equals zero. But this is just the preamble. Now consider the nth root of our sequence. This is Euler's target. We've just shown the base goes to zero, but the exponent one over n also goes to zero. This is the indeterminate form zero to the power of zero. A direct assault won't work. We need a bridge to a form we can handle. Enter the natural logarithm. It's continuous, which means we can swap it with the limit. So we write, the natural log of L equals the natural log of the limit as n approaches infinity of n factorial over n to the power of n, all raised to the power of one over n. Since the logarithm is continuous, this equals the limit as n approaches infinity of the natural log of n factorial over n to the power of n raised to the power of one over n. We use the logarithm's power rule to pull down the exponent one over n. Now unpack the inside. The natural log of n factorial divided by n to the power of n equals the natural log of n factorial minus the natural log of n to the power of n, which equals the natural log of n factorial minus n times the natural log of n. So our expression becomes the natural log of L equals the limit as n approaches infinity of one over n times the natural log of n factorial minus n times the natural log of n. Here is the clever rearrangement. Write the natural log of n factorial as a sum. 
natural log of 1 plus natural log of 2 all the way up to natural log of n. Then subtract n times the natural log of n by subtracting natural log of n from each term in the sum. The natural log of L equals the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over n times the sum from k equals 1 to n of the natural log of k minus the natural log of n. This natural log of k minus natural log of n becomes natural log of k over n. The expression is now the natural log of L equals the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over n times the sum from k equals 1 to n of the natural log of k over n. This natural log of k over n is the key. Look at the structure, 1 over n times a sum where k over n runs from 1 over n to 1. This is a Riemann sum. As n approaches infinity, the width delta x equals 1 over n goes to 0, and this sum converges to the definite integral of the function natural log of x over the interval from 0 to 1. Therefore, the natural log of L equals the integral from 0 to 1 of the natural log of x dx, we have transformed an elusive limit of a discrete sequence into a concrete, if challenging, calculus problem. Find the area under the natural log curve from 0 to 1. This integral is improper because the natural log of x blows up at x equals 0. We must handle it with care. Let's compute it formally using integration by parts. We recall the formula. The integral of u dv equals uv minus the integral of v du. We need to choose u and dv strategically. Let u equal the natural log of x, which means du equals 1 over x dx. Let dv equal dx, which means v equals x. Applying the formula, the integral of the natural log of x dx equals x times the natural log of x minus the integral of x times 1 over x dx, which equals x natural log of x minus the integral of 1 dx, which equals x natural log of x minus x plus c. Now we evaluate the definite integral as a limit. The integral from 0 to 1 of the natural log of x dx equals the limit as a approaches 0 from the right of x natural log of x minus x evaluated from a to 1. At x equals 1, 1 times natural log of 1 minus 1, which equals 0 minus 1, which equals negative 1. At x equals a, a natural log of a minus a. Subtract negative 1 minus the quantity a natural log of a minus a, which equals negative 1 minus a natural log of a plus a. So the integral equals the limit as a approaches 0 from the right of negative 1 plus a minus a natural log of a. The term a goes to 0. The tricky piece is a natural log of a. As a approaches 0, this is 0 times negative infinity. To resolve it, rewrite it as a quotient, natural log of a divided by 1 over a. Apply Lopakal's rule. The limit as a approaches 0 from the right of a natural log of a equals the limit of natural log of a divided by 1 over a. Differentiate top and bottom, 1 over a divided by negative 1 over a squared, which equals negative a. Thus, the limit is 0. Therefore, the entire limit is negative 1 plus 0 minus 0, which equals negative 1. We have conclusively shown the integral from 0 to 1 of the natural log of x dx equals negative 1. Let's retrace our steps. We defined L as the original limit, the nth root of n factorial divided by n to the power of n. We took the log, transformed the discrete sum into a continuous integral, and calculated that integral to be negative 1. So the natural log of L equals negative 1, which means L equals e to the power of negative 1. 
exponentiating both sides, L equals E to the power of negative one. This is the elegance. The sequence itself goes to zero, but its geometric mean, its nth root, converges to the reciprocal of Euler's number, one over E, a number intimately connected to growth, logarithms, and now factorials and powers. We didn't just verify a limit, we built a bridge from discrete mathematics to integral calculus using the tools of analysis, algebra, and a bit of clever insight. That's the journey Euler laid out, and that's real, rigorous mathematics.